In this screencast, I'm going to work example 17.4, which is the conversion of ethylene to ethanol. This is an interesting reaction, actually being commonly run backwards these days, to take ethanol and convert it into ethylene. However, let's look at the reaction of ethylene to ethanol. Section 17.7 .7 of the Elliott and Lyra text discusses the form for the full temperature dependence of the equilibrium constant. Section 17.8 discusses the shortcut Van Hoft. Look for a second at the full temperature dependence. The constant J in equation 17.28 is determined by the heat of reaction. The constant I is determined by fitting this particular equation to the Gibbs energy at a known temperature. Typically both J and I are determined at 298.15 Kelvin where we have reference information and then this equation can be used at other temperatures. Let's look at the spreadsheet and see how to set it up for this reaction. The spreadsheet is found in the Excel folder and I'll open KCalc all right, here are the overall instructions. If we go here, we can see that by default it starts with carbon monoxide and hydrogen going to methanol. In order to modify this, I'm going to go to the Pure Data tab and find ethanol, ethylene, and water. I'm going to copy ethylene and the data are entered by heat of formation, Gibbs energy of formation, and then the heat capacity constants. I'm just going to take all this information. I'm going to right click and copy. And then over here I'm going to choose paste special. And I'm going to paste just the values. Otherwise it ends up changing the cell protection. I'll pause the screencast in order to get the other components in the same way. Okay, I've got the other components. Now I need to change the stoichiometric numbers. Um, in this case we have one mole of each reactant forming one mole of ethanol. The spreadsheet has all the equations from the textbook already programmed and I can put in any temperature. You can see the box on the right hand side has intermediate calculations. Let me put in 298.15 and you can see that I recover in this cell the same value as the heat of formation at 298 and the Gibbs energy of formation at 298. I can put in uh, any reacting temperature here to find the value for the equilibrium constant in this cell at that temperature. I also get the heat of reaction at that temperature as well as the Gibbs energy of reaction at that temperature. This example asks us to find the equilibrium constant at 145 degrees C and also 320 degrees C. 145 degrees C is 418.15 Kelvin and you can see the equilibrium constant value is 0.1002 at a temperature of 320 degrees C, the Kelvin temperature is 593.15. And you can see the value here, 0 .00184, 185. You can compare these to the textbook value. Now very often you will be doing your own hand calculations using the shortcut Van Hoft and it can be a very good approximation. We can calculate the equilibrium constant at the reference point of 298.15 Kelvin and we can insert that value here and we can use 298.15 for the reference temperature. This allows us then to calculate the equilibrium constant very quickly at any other temperature. Notice that this is the heat of reaction at the reference temperature 298.15 and if we go back to the spreadsheet 
we can confirm that. Okay, 45.625 uh, kilojoules per mole. All right. We can replicate the shortcut equation by simply deleting the heat capacity information from the spreadsheet. And if we insert the temperatures, 418.15 Kelvin, it gives us an equilibrium constant 0 0 0.107. And if we put in 593.15, which is 320 degrees, we get a, an equilibrium constant of 0 0.0022. These are the values given in example 17.5. It also provides a quick way for you to double check that you understand how to do the calculations by the shortcut Van Hoft.